Hello my dear students and welcome once again to Zenith Academy Online. Today we are doing another part of the chapter endocrine system for ICSC class 10 biology that is pancreas. So in this video module I will be talking to you in detail about the endocrine gland pancreas. So are you ready? Let's start. So my dear students pancreas is both a duct gland as well as a ductless gland. Okay. It is a duct gland as well as a ductless gland. Can you see here a blue colored duct? So it is pouring its secretion into the duodenum. So it is a it has a duct. Whereas can you see this yellow yellow departments? This small small departments. These are called isolates of Langerhans. Okay, and they are a ductless gland. So let's talk about it. So first as a duct gland, we'll be talking about pancreas. So as a duct gland, how pancreas behave? Okay, so as a duct gland, it's secretion. So what is its secretion? Pancreatic juice. Okay, remember the spelling very well. Pancreatic juice. Okay, so you can see this that through this duct the pancreatic juice is poured into the duodenum. Okay, from here it goes into the small intestine and then you know through this duct this secretion is being poured. Okay, so as a duct gland its secretion that is the pancreatic juice is poured into the duodenum for digestion. Now, if you see here I had already showed you these glands here. Okay, these, these ones. Okay, so as a ductless gland now, as a ductless gland, it has special group of hormone secreting cells. So these are the different types, of, uh, groups of cells and these cells, these cells, what do they do? They secrete hormones. Okay, and these group of hormone secreting cells are called isolates of Langerhans, which are scattered in the, in the entire gland where isolates means little islands. It shows like little, little islands are there, right? So as a ductless gland, it has special group of hormone secreting cells. And these hormone secreting cells are known as isolates of Langerhans. Now, see here, this is a detailed picture of uh, your pancreas. Okay, so here, this you can see the, the hole. Okay, so this is the duct. This is the duct. From where pancreatic juice is poured, right? Now, if you see this in middle, wait, let me take the highlight uh, pointer. Okay. If you take this, see this. This is these are a special group of hormone secreting cells. Can you see this light blue? This is beta cell. Okay. So this beta cell secrete insulin. Okay, it secretes insulin. Now, can you see this dark blue type of a cells? These are alpha cells and alpha cells secrete glucagon. Okay. And then there are these purplish color delta cells. And these delta cells secrete somatostanin. Now, somatostanin is not in our portion, my dear children. So, remember the pancreas have a group of, okay, uh, uh, hormone releasing or hormone secreting cells okay so the isolate produce three hormones what are these three hormones the three hormones are insulin glucagon and somatostatin somatostatin sorry and this is released from three different kinds of cells called beta alpha and delta cells remember beta cells secrete insulin alpha cells secrete glucagon and your delta cell secretes somatostatin. Clear to you? We will not study about somatostatin, but we will study about insulin and glucagon in detail. So let's start. First, we will talk about insulin. So remember, insulin is secreted by beta cells. Okay. It checks the rise of sugar level in the blood. It doesn't allow that the sugar level should increase in the blood. So whenever there is an increase in the sugar level, insulin is secreted. So it checks the rise of sugar level in the blood. And how it does? It does that in two principal ways. What is the first way? It promotes glucose. Glucose is nothing but sugar. Glucose means sugar. 
okay so it promotes the glucose or the sugar utilization by the body cells what it does it tells the body cells to absorb more and more of glucose and use it okay second it stimulates the deposition of extra glucose of the blood as glycogen in the liver and the muscles what else it does okay so whatever extra glucose is there in the blood okay it stimulates its deposition as glycogen okay so it helps in conversion of okay it doesn't convert it helps in conversion of extra glucose as glycogen and then store it or deposit it in the liver and in the muscles i hope this is clear now let's talk about abnormalities in insulin what happens when there is a shortage or excess of insulin so first let's talk about shortage of insulin that is insufficient secretion of insulin so insufficient secretion of insulin leads to diabetes mellitus you have to remember the spellings very well diabetes mellitus its other name is hyperglycemia okay so insufficient secretion of insulin causes diabetes which is more accurately diabetes mellitus okay diabetes are also many types so which type of diabetes here the sugar level increases so this type of a diabetes is known as diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia okay the word mellitus means honey so it is it refers to the passage of sugar that is more sugar or glucose in the urine okay now so what happens to a diabetic person what are the symptoms of a diabetic person and what does he suffer from so a diabetic person has high concentration of sugar we already know okay we are talking about insufficient secretion of insulin so if insulin is less okay and insulin checks the blood sugar level right so agar insulin kam secrete hua hai to blood mein sugar ka level badh jayega right so a diabetic person has high concentration of sugar in the blood okay which and this condition is known as hyperglycemia we already studied hyper means excess zyada glyce means sugar or glucose and emia refers to blood so hyperglycemia means excess sugar in the blood now it excretes a great deal of urine loaded with sugar so as we studied just now here okay it refers to the passage of sugar in the urine so the urine also contains a lot of sugar so excretes a great deal of urine loaded with sugar next is the person feels very thirsty because of the loss of water through too much urination hai na next the diabetic person loses weight and becomes weaker and weaker now in certain cases children the person loses eyesight or vision here the usual treatment by administrating insulin is not a cure so mostly you must have seen ki a diabetic person carries insulin injections with them okay so uh, we administer insulin in the body of the diabetic person whenever the sugar level rises but this is not a cure it is only a method of supplying a hormone which is not being produced by the pancreas so pancreas is insufficiently producing the insulin very less amount of insulin is produced and that is why diabetes mellitus happens right so when we are giving the when we are administrating insulin into the body of a person who is diabetic we are not actually curing it what we are doing it we are supplying the hormone which is not being able not which the pancreas is not being able to supply in good quantities correct now what happens when there is an over secretion of insulin so obviously when there is a over secretion of insulin the sugar level will go down hai na it is lowered this this condition is known as hypoglycemia hypo means below okay and glycemia you already know sugar level in the blood so there is, when there is a low sugar level in the blood because insulin ne kya kiya insulin has reduced the blood sugar level right so what may happen brain may enter a state of coma coma mein chala jata hai insaan and if the level becomes too low even for a few minutes okay so the person may uh, the brain of the person may enter a state of coma 
if the level becomes too low even for a few minutes okay so please note this down my dear children a similar thing may happen to a diabetic patient if an overdose of insulin is given so this is naturally when there is an over secretion of insulin it leads to glycemia but you know a diabetic patient takes the injection of insulin so if by chance uh, uh, by mistake or by anything if there is an overdose of insulin that has been taken the patient may become unconscious and this is called what is this called this is called insulin shock or again hypoglycemia and uh, and prompt intake of sweet biscuit or sugar candy is helpful. This is intake. Okay. So whenever you see that a diabetic patient has taken an uh, insulin injection and it is, he has become uh, unconscious or not feeling well, you give an instant dose of uh, sugar candy or sweet biscuits. Okay. Because he is undergoing insulin shock. Okay. Now. So so saying that insulin converts glucose to glycogen is completely wrong insulin doesn't convert glucose to glycogen it helps okay instead what we can write we can write insulin enables the cell to absorb glucose and use it or to convert it into glycogen right insulin itself doesn't convert but it so we should not be writing this statement that insulin converts glucose to glycogen no insulin enables the cells to absorb glucose and use it or convert it into the glycogen so this is the perfect statement but many a times for the ease of saying we say it like this but this is not exactly correct okay now insulin is over now let's talk about the next hormone that is glucagon okay glucagon is secreted from alpha cells okay insulin was secreted from uh, beta cells and glucagon is secreted from alpha cells remember now what does it do it stimulates the breakdown of glycogen in the liver so it what it does in the liver it helps or stimulates in the breakdown of glycogen to glucose and thus it raises the sugar level in the blood so both of them have a, have the opposite function insulin decreases the sugar level in the blood whereas glucagon increases the sugar level in the blood how does it increase the sugar level okay it stimulates the breakdown of the stored glycogen in the liver and convert it into the glucose again and glucose is nothing but sugar so the blood sugar level rises right now let's talk about the role of these pancreatic hormones that is insulin and glucagon in regulating the blood sugar level we have already spoken about it now let's see through a diagrammatic representation now let's see here this is a very interesting diagram see here what happens see we'll start from the liver we know in the liver glycogen okay is converted into glucose correct so when glycogen gets converted into glucose okay so the liver releases glucose so it raises the blood sugar level the blood sugar level will increase because glucogen has glycogen has been converted into glucose so whenever there is a high blood sugar level okay whenever the blood sugar level is high it promotes the insulin release okay it promotes the insulin release now in the pancreas what happens the pancreas release insulin now which cells of the pancreas release insulin we have just understood which cells of the pancreas release stim, uh, insulin which tissue cells beta cells yes so the beta cells of the pancreas what they does it releases insulin now insulin does two things we have already done two things first it stimulates the formation of glycogen in the liver so first say it, it goes in the liver and it is stimulating the formation of glycogen so again from glucose glycogen is formed okay so from glucose it is stimulating the formation of glycogen so glucose level will decrease okay by this way the uh, bl blood sugar level will decrease second what insulin does is it stimulates the glucose uptake from the blood so it tells the tissue cells of, of muscles kidney fat etc to take up more glucose 
एंड यूटिलाइज इट है ना इंसुलिन के दो फंक्शन है इट टेल्स और स्टिमुलेट द ग्लूकोज अपटेक फ्रॉम द ब्लड सो इट टेल्स द टिश्यू सेल्स इट हेल्प द सेल्स टू एब्सॉर्ब मोर ऑफ ग्लूकोज एंड यूटिलाइज इट ओके एंड इट ऑल्सो टेल्स द लिवर टू कन्वर्ट द ग्लूकोज इन टू स्टोर्ड ग्लाइकोजन एंड इन दिस वे इट चेक्स द ब्लड शुगर लेवल इट रिड्यूसेज द ब्लड शुगर लेवल सो वेन एवर दर इज एन इंक्रीज इन ब्लड शुगर लेवल the pancreas the b cell beta cells of the pancreas releases insulin and by these two methods the blood sugar level decreases you understood now now if there is a low blood sugar if it goes beyond that bahut kam ho jata if there is a low blood sugar then what happens it promotes glucagon release how it promotes see here now it goes in uh, in the pancreas it tells the alpha cells what it tells the alpha cells to release glucagon so now glucagon is released now what does this glucagon do it stimulates the breakdown of glycogen so again glycogen breaks down and forms glucose again this glucose goes in the blood and again raises the blood sugar level and so by the function by uh, this uh, harmonious function of the secretion of alpha cells and beta cells or we can say secretion of glucagon and insulin this helps in maintaining the blood sugar level i hope you have understood this very well now just we will recap the hormones of the islet cells okay we just now said that the alpha cells okay we just now spoke about these two but i want to talk about somatostatin also it is not in the portion but a small thing i want to say see alpha cells release glucagon and glucagon stimulates the liver to release glucose and hence what is the effect on blood glucose level it increases the blood glucose level increases by glucagon now the beta cells of the islet cells release insulin it increases the glucose uptake chiefly by muscles and fat cells so if the uh, muscles and fat cells are taking the glucose so the glucose level will decrease right now the delta cells releases somatostatin now somatostatin we don't have to study it is not there in the syllabus but just understand it works it has a dual function so if the blood glucose level are low somatostatin inhibits the release of insulin it stops the release of insulin inhibits okay so if it inhibits the release of insulin the blood glucose level will increase and if the blood glucose level are high then the somatostatin inhibits the release of glucagon it inhibits now the release of glucagon so now the blood sugar level falls down so this is a small introduction of somatostatin so you should be knowing that somatostatin also helps in the same balance okay now so let's quickly revise the hormones of islets of langerhans so insulin released from beta cells it promotes glucose uptake by body cells and it stimulates deposition of extra glucose as glycogen in liver and muscles and what does the deficiency of this causes deficiency causes diabetes mellitus which is called sugar diabetes and the excess causes nerve cell starvation we just now studied coma mein chale jate hain right and brain coma right now insulin is done let's talk about glucagon it is released from alpha cells it stimulates liver to convert glycogen into glucose next is somatostatin from delta cells this is not in syllabus but you have to understand that it, inhib it inhibits the secretion of insulin and glucagon both as and when required so i hope you have understood pancreas and all the hormones released by pancreas so if you have liked the class do give it a thumbs up write in the comment section share it with your friends and keep the learning always on on zenith academy online